Welcome to the Torvus Podcast. My name is Ari, and today I'm joined by Jason, and we're going to be talking everything Star Trek. So get ready to uh, span the galaxy with myself and Jason as we get into it. Jason, welcome to the Torvus Podcast. Pleasure to be here with you tonight, Ari. So, um, as a self-confessed geek, uh, you and I both share a love for Star Trek, of course. Indeed we do, for a long time. So, there has been multiple TV shows over the years uh, for Star Trek, but we're going to start at the beginning, of course, because... As we should. As we should. And um, we're going to talk about characters, we're going to talk about favorite episodes, uh, aliens, and uh, we're going to go into the Dane's Dungeon part of this, which is the cool shit bullshit portion of the podcast, which we're going to be talking about uh, characters uh, that we think are cool and others that we think are total bullshit. Excellent. So um, we're going to start actually talking about the original series and some trivia that we'll be throwing your way. Um, but before we do that, I actually want to talk about a web episode series that you turned me on to that is absolutely amazing. It is Star Trek Continues. So how did you come across that? Because for those of you who don't know, just kind of give them a background what it is. Star Trek Continues is amazing. It is one of the best shows on TV, movie, YouTube, anywhere. It is one of the finest artistic, technical, et cetera, creations ever made. It is, if you are a fan of the original series Star Trek, and that is your Star Trek, you cannot not watch that. That is the continuation. When it says Star Trek continues, it means it. it so, is so when does it four, pick up? It's season four of Star Trek, basically. So they're completing the five-year mission. They're completing the five-year mission, the original crew, original series, different actors. But I'm telling you, after you watch a couple episodes, you won't even know that they're different actors. You will get so used to them. They are so good. The series is so well done, you will really believe you were watching the continuous thing. So how did they get funded for that? Because it, it's not a paid thing, right? They did They did some fundraisers, Kickstarters, or something like that. I found out about it after, when I found out, I don't know the exact timing, but I found out about after there was a Kickstarter, and then I just started watching, watching the episodes. There's various different fan ones. Some of the other fan ones are okay, but this is, this is not just good for a fan thing. This is better, and I can get into this later on in some detail. It is better than professional things. These people that are do it are professional actors, professional right. voice actors. They do have professionals. It's not just random people in their basement, but it is a fan-made thing made with love rather than made for love with love rather than money. And one of the really awesome things about when, when I started watching it is the sets were bang on. Like, they, they it just... Everything looks the same from the 1960s series. Yeah, that's the thing. Is when I first told you about it, I remember I, I was like, I was like, you have to see this thing. It is the acting is bang on, the lighting, the sound effects, the music, the special effects. Everything is done. It is not a modern remake, a modern reimagining. They're using modern tools, but they're making it look like it was made in the late 1960s. Yeah, it is astounding how accurate it is to that. So if you if you go online and you type in Star Trek Continues, it will come up. So the the actor that plays uh, Captain exactly. Kirk, Vic, uh, is awesome. He has his he has the character down of Kirk, the oh, mannerisms. Yes. It's really fantastic. He doesn't have the character down when he's doing it. He is Kirk. He is Kirk. He's not William Shatner. He is Captain Kirk. They, it, it, yeah. It, it's really hard to over oversell this. Although maybe if you watch it after hearing me, but I I pumped it up to you Ari before I, and you know there's yeah. some things I rave about a lot of things I nitpick and complain about what did you think when I told you about what did you expect that going going into it before? I literally when I started watching Star Trek Continues it was one of those things where I got I I got brought back to watching the original series and you really do lose yourself it's like it's no longer Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner it's just the characters it was fantastic and um one of the trivia things in it is the person who plays Scotty on it is Chris Duan which is yeah, is related to the real original it's original son. Scotty yeah. son yeah so uh which is great so and again fantastic i i don't know how many they did maybe 7 episodes yeah no they ended up doing 11 they were supposed 11. To, they were supposed to do 13 right 
there were reasons why it only ended up being 11, but it's, it, this idea was to do the continuation of the series to do the next, the next season. So. so one of the absolute best television shows and series, whatever that I've seen was on Star Trek continues. And it was actually a continuation of an episode of the original series called Mirror Mirror. Yes. I believe the Star Trek Continues one's called Ferris of Them All or something like something yes. we'd have to look that up because yeah. my you know how me with my memory, but it's it's a continuation of of Mirror Mirror, one so, of the best episodes of the original Star Trek. If you don't remember Mirror Mirror, in the original episode, it's basically there's a transporter accident and uh, part of the crew gets beamed on to a mirror universe where the Enterprise is evil and Spock is evil and Spock has a goatee and all this stuff. And it ends up um, at the end, y- you have to watch the episode, but the continuation from Star T- Trek continues. They continue on the moment that basically Kirk and Spock are having this this discussion. Yeah. And in fact, on, on YouTube, you can see someone else, it's not on the Star Trek continues YouTube channel, but there's some other one. Someone does a side by side where you can see the two scenes at the same time of the original and not the original to give you an idea of how good it is. If you're not really a big fan of, of the original Star Trek, maybe this isn't going to be such a big deal for you. But if you are a true original fan of original Star Trek, then this, this will do this for you. I think that one of the things that makes it so good is is if you really want to compare to see what good Star Trek is versus bad Star Trek. Yeah. If there's if one wants to even say there's bad Star Trek, but if you want to say that, you look at the continuation episodes. Like one of the in maybe jumping ahead a little bit here, but the best Star Trek movie ever made was Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. Now, part of the reason why it was the best movie ever made was because it was a continuation of an original Star Trek series yes. episode, Space Seed, I believe it was called. Yeah. And so this is this is how you tell when something's really good. If you can make something that continues on from a previous episode and you can do it years later, then you know you've nailed it. And when you can't, well, then you haven't. In fact, the, the opening episode of the Star Trek continues is a continuation of another original series episode who mourns for adonis right and it's called i believe pilgrim of eternity yeah the first the first episode in star trek continues Mm -hmm. so for anyone who doesn't remember that one it's where the original crew they find a planet the ship is held by a big giant green hand which was like so awesome back when i first saw it (laughs) yeah i only saw the things in the 80s because i'm not old enough to have seen them of course they first came out but you know probably older than most of the people listening to this but anyway they Get there, and the planet turns out that Apollo, the god Apollo, the Greek god, is down there. So it's it's Star Trek's encounter with a with with a god, and Star Trek continues. Their first episode has a continuation of that. Yep, and and you're right. It's uh, I think it just stands the test of time if they can do that. And I was hooked as soon as as soon as I saw that. My f- first two degrees are in classics and ancient Greek and Latin. So, mm-hmm. um, which. It's not coincidental because the Who Mourns for Adonis was a very influential episode for me. In fact, the whole Star Trek has changed my life in several different ways. Right. We're talking about the original series. It ran for three seasons, and uh, I believe it started in 66 uh, and then got canceled after three seasons. And it was supposed to be the five-year mission. And in the, I rewatched the episodes multiple times, and they never get old. They're always hilarious. No, they are. And so years later, they come up and say, hey, let's make a movie. And they decide to make Star Trek, the motion picture. Star Trek, the motion picture. Yes. So th- that came out in, I think, 79. And yeah, 79, uh, they, 80, something like that. They, like that. they that. dumped a ton of money into it, a lot of special effects. It was really big for the time. But the movie flopped because it was a shitty uh, script and it was horrible. And there was discussions like, well, were they going to do another one? And then The Wrath of Khan came out in 82 which blew the doors off. It yes. was Ricardo Montalban uh, was back and he was a super badass. Yes. And that's part of the reason it was, it was so good because they did con right. They had the original actor come back, do con they had, and they did true that the story continued on in the spirit of it, even though it was made later, it did pick up where it, it left off in a and brilliant I th- way. And I think a good, any television series or movie that's out there that has a good villain makes for a good episode. If you don't have a good villain, if you don't have, uh, you know, Sherlock's um, uh, arch enemy or anything like that, then it just doesn't work, right? So the Khan, yeah, that's Khan definitely a big component 
if you're going to make something good without a, well, I mean, you can make something good without a good villain, but you got to be even better to pull that off without a good villain. But yeah. So, um, after the, obviously the original, the original series, there's a, a lot of you know, kickoffs from there. The next generation came out and then you had deep space nine and you got Voyager animated series. Don't forget the animated series, animated, start, yep. animated series, which did, did have the voices. So. And did. they added some weird aliens in there as part there's of the three, crew. three armed guys. The alien race starts with an E, you know, how I am with names. I don't remember that well, but the little three armed guy, I'm always waiting on every star Trek that they come up with a new star Trek yeah. that they're going to put that race in. The three-armed guy? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. There's a few races that they've cut me, cut me short on. Well, let's talk about... So, as I said, there's all these series that came out, and, and Star Trek has been influential. Obviously, uh, science fiction has turned into science fact. We've looked at things like, you know, we walk around with our cell phones, communicators. Yeah. Uh, everything, all this stuff is was... Um, shown in Star Trek in the 1960s. You know, yeah. you had the, the flip communicator, which turned in our flip phones. We had a tricorder, which is basically yeah. any mobile device. Floppy disks, the three and a half, the three and a half inch floppy. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, you know. Um, now they're working in the military. They're working on lasers and phasers and, and, and that type mm-hmm. of stuff. It's it's crazy. Uh, cloaking technology they, they're trying to work on. Talk Transporters, to, replicators. Like, yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, Warp fields and yeah, yeah. It's so it, it's been pretty awesome how it's kind oh, of transparent blended. aluminum in the news recently. That yeah, you there mentioned is, that that I saw I saw something. I didn't read the whole thing in detail, but there was a thing about in the real world there is transparent aluminum, and that was in one of the one of the Star Trek movies, the one with the whales. What no, was Star that? Trek Four? Four. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, yeah, so it's it been pretty good. So I'm going to ask you, uh, I was just asked this the other day because I said that we we're going to do a Star Trek episode and someone said, can you rate your captains? So the kind of the five captains from your best to worst. And so I'm going to rate mine and then I'm going to have you rate yours on uh, where you'd rate them from one to five. Okay. My captain order goes like this. Okay. Jean-Luc Picard. And I know, and a very close. Uh, well, you're younger, so. Well, not much, but Jean-Luc Picard followed by Kirk, because Kirk and him are very, cl- very close, uh, followed by Janeway, Cisco, and Archer. Hmm. How about you? Kirk, Picard. Um, then Cisco, Cisco, Janeway, Archer, out of the, if you're going with those five, yeah. Okay. And so Jean-Luc Picard, what is his thing that you didn't like about him? Sometimes he was a little bit too too politically correct, but he was written differently in different episodes So, because it's a much longer run of things. Right. And the way that the next generation's written, it's got a lot of episodic rather than serial Things. So they'll have some nice arcs and stuff, but they'll have little episodes that are done by different writers. So it's not as consistent with his character. So there's a so, lot of character so, development. So there's there's character development, but there's parts when Picard is just amazing. Yeah. And there's so some of the writers got Picard and some didn't. Right. As as much, but and so an interesting point, uh, trivia about um, Patrick Stewart. For the first six weeks of his filming, he didn't unpack his bags when he was living in the hotel because he didn't think it would fly. He thought hmm. they would cancel it after the first couple episodes. Sure, didn't go that way. His life is a little different now, isn't it crazy? And then coming up, uh, especially now, yeah, Star Trek Picard is coming out, yeah, which is uh, what do they say, seventeen years after after his last. It'll be interesting thing. to see. I just saw the trailer, yeah. the other day, yesterday, or something like that. Um, and it doesn't really give anything away. And I don't like going to see spoilers and stuff anyway. I just like to enjoy things on, right. their, own, on their own merit as they, as they come out. But, and that seemed to me that it was very much that the trailer, I'm not, I'll talk about it, but doesn't give anything away. It's like got a, a, a vineyard and bottles of wine and stuff. And that's one of the things that was very, very Picard. And that yeah. was in the thing. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is good. And, and they actually talk about it in that trailer. It's like, Admiral, why did you retire or leave Starfleet? That's the only like one line in there. Yeah. So you're like, hmm, you're wonder like what that. it's, it's like be. It, It's good because it leaves you hanging. It's like, right. hey, I want to find out more because he is like, for me, you, you're number one, my number two. Yeah. Um, so good. Favorite, favorite captain. And there were some of those episodes that were just so good. Which we're going to talk about in a, in a moment because uh, I can think of a few that just come to mind. But let's talk about the negative thing. I think Cisco was your number third. Is that correct? Cisco was my third. And what would something, what would Cisco's uh, negative, Jason negative thing be? What didn't you like about him? Well, with Cisco, I don't have kids. 
when it was the dad kind of things didn't really work for me, but mm -hmm. that maybe it just, it didn't work. Sometimes they were like, you know, Cisco's role as being a dad. So it's may not be that they're not well done or good. It's just that it didn't speak to me that I didn't really, I was kind of like, okay, you know, that's right. Not the character that was for, for me there. And when those were the focus, that was to me, that was a weak, the weak parts okay. when they were dealing with this character again, just for me, yep. someone else that might've been the strong parts. You don't have to apologize. It's okay. No, it, but everyone's got a different <laughs> opinion and, and people can be very opinionated about things that they love so much. Like yeah. Star Trek people, some people have very big parts of their life are totally. Star Trek. I'm a multi, multi, uh, geek. So I'm not a pure Star Trek fan. I have multiple geek interests. Right. Okay, so you said Janeway was number four. Janeway's number four, and it may be similar to the Archer thing because some of the episodes, my, <laughs> there were parts of Voyager that I really enjoyed and there were parts that I really hated. Okay. Some of the episodes felt like one writer started the thing and came up with a really brilliant idea and then they gave the second half of a show to a really shitty writer mm -hmm. that just torpedoed the idea mm -hmm. and didn't follow it through. So again, I'm going to give those another try later and see am I holding that against some of the writing that didn't seem to work for me, maybe that cut into my enjoyment of the character. So, But did you have a personality quirk that you didn't, that you were just like, oh, no, man, actually, there were a lot of people at the time that were complaining about her. Yeah. That it was, there was a lot of complaints about her uh -huh. and I didn't have that thing. My complaints about Voyager, I don't know if we should save that till later if we're going thing by thing or if we just do it now. Um, my complaint about the show is that they had things set up so well in in the next generation with the McKee and the Cardassians. Mm -hmm. And they had the whole thing about like the, so the McKee were like the renegade rebel terrorist kind of offshoot people were fighting against the evil Cardassians. And some of Starfleet, Starfleet personnel had left Starfleet to go join the McKee and fight against the Cardassians. Right. And the Voyager crew basically ends up being a, a conglomeration of regular Starfleet and McKee thrown together. Right. What they failed, the reason that that show is not as good as it should have, could have, should have, and would have been, mm -hmm. is because they didn't play up on that tension between the two aspects of the crew. They had a little tiny bit, but then it's like, then they were suddenly all getting along. There was a little bit, but I mean, they could have done a lot more with that. So tough to do. It's, if, again, it's, it's not her character's fault that there's, they could have had some really great tension there that, and, and done some great character stuff, yep. but they didn't. So it's not the character's fault. It's not how that is. It's just that the way that they took the series wasn't, it had such good potential. It just didn't go as far mm -hmm. as it could have. And, and so, so there was, I was looking at past episodes of Star Trek, the next generation, and there's quite a few more, uh, episodes obviously in the next generation because it ran for so many more seasons. And I was looking through the episode list and there really were some amazing episodes. Like, oh, and I, yeah. and, and I can't remember the, them by name, uh, but there's the one where he ends up, uh, that probe comes. The and probe, yes, with the he, sun. And the flute. Get, and he yes, has a he gets full sucked life. And has a full life. That's one of my favorite episodes. That's one of the best Picard episodes. I think, I think that got an Emmy. That it, episode. If it didn't, I it should have. Like that is not just, not just good if you're a Star Trek Man, that's that's good TV. Good, a good. I don't remember what it was called either, but that was a really good one for for Picard, and that's one to show character. There, I that's one of the ones I was going to mention as well. Yeah, that was that was really good, and they had uh, like a, some really good um, uh, double episodes. Like they had, I think it was I Borg. It was and when he was all oh, the Borg, Judas. the Borg series when they when those first came out. Oh, those were that was and they had the big badass. big cliffhanger and stuff. That was a big deal. Yeah, when that came out, I remember waiting for that come out and then having being at a we were at a, we had a potluck party and it was like everything had to stop when the episode came on was, and, and you know it's really funny I'm, I'm thinking about how the characters have developed on the next generation and i mentioned this a few years ago but the most insubordinate um officer on the bridge and i think there's a compilation of it but wharf like, but captain, but captain, like he always was questioning, like he would be court martialed <laughs> for the amount of times that he ended up speaking out. It was hilarious. Like a lot of times he wasn't even, he wouldn't follow orders. I was just like, dude, how has this guy still got his job? Hmm. Yeah. So I just found it pretty fascinating. And if you look when they started the show of how kind of, um, you know, everything was new and the tight stuff and then the wardrobe changes and the characters yeah. start getting into it. And you and I always joke. The first season of Next Generation is pretty, pretty rough going. It's pretty rough. And yeah. an interesting thing between the Star Trek, the original series, the first movie 
the Star Trek, the motion picture, and the next generation, there was a, a Star Trek thing, I believe it was called Phase 2. Now, don't confuse this. There's a YouTube thing about called, called Star Trek Phase 2. This is, this is very different. And there was a book made about, about this, um, Star Trek Phase 2. This, they had planned that after, after the motion picture, they were going to have a new Star Trek TV yeah. series. And they had several of the episodes... And I've seen like partial, the book had like partial scripts and a bunch of other little things. And it was really fascinating, if you will. <laughs> but yeah. in it, some of those things, when that series never did get made, some of those things got carried over into, into, the, next gener yeah. into the next generation. Again, it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. When I went bankrupt, I had to get rid of some of my books. And that was one of the ones that unfortunately I had to let go. Um, but... So I don't remember the details, but it was pretty cool to see some of the stuff that was in the next generation, how it had originally been planned to be for the, the original continuation series. Yeah. So they kind of blended it. And I think there was, yeah, Roddenberry actually wrote the scripts for it. And I saw some like originals from it and it was pretty cool. Yeah. So you people are listening, there's probably some cool thing about the internet. And um, if you can leave a link, I would like to read that again because it's been, <laughs> been a while. <laughs> I'm sure we could find it. I mean, the internet has everything. Yeah, well, I'll probably look it up afterwards. Yeah. Um, so obviously after, you know, the next generation and uh, ended, uh, they went on to... No, actually they started other episodes as the next generation was going on. Deep Space Nine started. Yeah, and Deep Space Nine was a great continuation of the next generation. They did a really good blending between the two things there. And I guess that's maybe, again, part of the reason that I didn't find Voyagers good because they did such a good job of moving from next generation mm -hmm. to Deep Space Nine, having the little crossovers and and continue there. That Okay, so I'm going to do some a uh, little trivia with you. And okay. I'm going to test some of your Star Trek knowledge. And okay. we'll see where we go. Okay. So the first one is uh, Earth is in what quadrant? Zero, zero, one. Uh, yes, if you're the Borg. But the galaxy is divided into four quadrants. Alpha? Yeah. It's in the Alpha quadrant? Now, they always talk about it's in the Alpha quadrant. And technically, yes, it is. But if you look on the map, it's actually right on the border of the Alpha and Beta quadrant. Oh. Yes. So the original Star Trek series and the next generation, it actually, it, so it's the Alpha and Beta Quadrant that mm -hmm. they, are, they are operating in. So if you look at it where um, Vulcan is and where the Klingon homeworld, which is in the Beta Quadrant. Okay. Uh, it, it's really neat to look at the map. So if you look, if you look it up, you, you can see it. And that's kind of where they operate. But the Earth is kind of right on the, right on the cusp there. And then you have the Gamma Quadrant and then you have the Delta Quadrant. Mm -hmm. And as we know, the other series went into there. So uh, Gamma Quadrant is where Voyager went. And then in the Delta Quadrant is where uh, Deep Space Nine was operating through the wormhole. Yeah, with the Dominion and all that, yeah. Yeah, and then e each quadrant, it seems to have their own, uh, almost, you know, like a Roman, like an empire. Everything has something. Like you've got the Federation mm -hmm. and the Alpha Quadrant. And then you've got the Klingons. And then you've got the Romulans and the Beta Quadrant. Well, interesting, there was a... Also, another in my multiple geek things, role playing is a huge part of my life. Also, coming from Star Trek as an influence, but uh, there was a early version of a Star Trek game. There's many other role playing games that have come out since then, but a company called FASA, which made Battle Tech oh, yeah. and Renegade Legion and stuff like that. But in the FASA version of the Star Trek Star Trek universe, they had a thing that was called uh, the Triangle that was in, in between, in between like the, they had the Klingons or Romulans and the Federation, and then, then they had like the Orions and stuff, another one of my right. great favorite, favorite races as a underdone. They don't go into this, the Orion Syndicate. The Orion Syndicate it very, basically, very rarely touched upon. Yeah, and that was really... Except God, when Star Trek continues once again. That's true, but they could have gone really deep into that because it, essentially it's kind of like the underworld or the mafia yeah. and, uh, you know, it had that kind of Han Solo yeah. rogue stuff going on. Really yeah. cool. And so if you're looking to do a Star Trek role-playing thing yeah. where you're running the thing instead of just passively watching it, that is an amazing setting to be able to do, mm -hmm. to be able to do things. And because you get a blend of all the different things and in that area, it's sort of like a neutral area between where they're, they're fighting it. You get different things between and some of the episodes, like the, mm -hmm. the trouble with Tribbles, for instance, uh, again, I'm going to mostly be referencing original yeah. series uh, things where the, the Federation and the, and the Klingons are basically competing over, over a planet to see who can, who can develop it better. And what was the name of, you like to throw out trivia, what yeah. was the name of the grain in which 
It was quadro Trigitocaly or something like that. Quadrotrigitocaly, I believe, is yeah. correct. Okay, I didn't look. I, it up. I didn't look it up. No. So someone else was like, "No, you're both wrong." No, but, so that was that's coming from the memory. But yeah, so that that was what the tri- having, triples were feasting feasting upon. But that was interesting because that was an area where the plant where the Klingons and Federation were competing. Sometimes it was yes. war, but it wasn't always just outright battle. That it was. It was interesting. Kind of there was a little bit of cold. Again, you're in the '60s here, so it was a little bit of cold warishness going on. Totally. And uh, when the Deep Space Nine did the episode of Run the Triples, yes. when they go back in time. Amazing. And again, what makes a good Star Trek episode? Yep. This is this is one of the big things that, that I think so. And what made that so good is because you took something old and you stayed true to it. Right. That's what makes it really good. And so the, I, and I was just watching recently, I was watching The Next Generation. And uh, I think in season seven or eight, they have an episode called Relics. And that's where they find Scotty who is in a transporter beam and they pull him back and he ends up being on the Enterprise. Do you remember that one? I remember there was one with Riker where they had a second Riker. No, not that one. There? That, that's a similar thing. But the, the one with Scotty is he basically, it he has on a ship called the Janolan and it crashes on a Dyson sphere and they find it because there's a signal and they go down and they beam him. And the, or, and the way that Scotty survived 75 years is he decided to put himself in a diagnostic loop in a transporter and that's how he, and they rematerialize him after 75 years. I don't remember that. I can't believe oh I don't God. remember that. Well, this is, this is why I have to rewatch okay. these, so this these is other ones. The, another great episode. Uh, very sad though, right? Cause he, he's kind of like, well, 75 years have passed. Oh. And does he, is he, is he really, you know, does he have anything to offer in the 24th century? And it mm-hmm. was, it was, it was a good one. Yeah. And so the oh, one, I remember, okay. Yeah. Next year. Okay. When they bring him back. Yes. I remember that. I just didn't remember the, the, First part about where they got him, yeah, got him from. Okay, and then and then he goes to yeah. the holodeck and he's got the green uh, drink on him, and then and he is like, uh, you know, registration. What do you want? And he's like NCC one seven zero one. No bloody A B C or D. Yeah. And then yeah. it shows the bridge, and it was very it was very good. Yeah, very well done. Great. They, and they have a, there's a lot of good episodes in Star Trek where they have people that are for a long time. Again, I'm sorry. I'm not. Well, I'm not sorry because because it's because they're the best. Yeah. Is the original series and then Star Trek Continuous has has a great one where where there's a, a Kirk that's that's left alone for a long time. Tre- where treads a shadow or treads a shadow or yeah. something something like that where you get to see an old an old Kirk and then one of the other it wasn't Star Trek Continuous. It's one of the other fan made ones. I can't remember what it what it was but it had one with um sulu where he i believe it was sulu that that was for a long time for, to see what happened to him later and i think they were going to make another movie or series with sulu as captain of the excel Excelsior. Excelsior. you know it's a, another trivia about that they asked sulu to come back in one of the episodes however um i think it was in one of the movies but um, George Takei refused to do it because if he came back, it would have been a reduction in his character's rank to serve under Kirk again. And George Takei said, listen, Sulu has done all the stuff. He's now captain. He's, he's earned the right to be mm-hmm. here. So he shouldn't be coming back to serve under someone again. And yeah. so he refused to do it. And so I think they changed it. And that's why they introduced his daughter as part of a character to have a Sulu. Oh, in. It's, okay. it was that kind of thing. So there was a lot of drama apparently on the set between a lot of the actors uh, over the yeah, years. I don't. I, celebrity stuff. I don't know much about. I just. Yeah, I, I just, just. I just go for. Char- I was reading a Time magazine and, stuff about that, and it's just like, wow, it's pretty crazy. So yeah. Although that he became didn't the Sulu actor guy become some big social media guy yeah, a few, George, a few yeah. years back, and he was like all over Facebook. I've, I haven't been on Facebook. Yeah, for a he long still time, is. So. George Takei is all over it, and uh, he's got like he had some good millions, funny things. millions of followers. But speaking about actor, I don't know who the guy that one of the most maligned Star Trek characters is Wesley Crusher. <laughs> now. The, D&D fan. The actor, I don't, again, I don't know actors' names, but but the actor is awesome. He, maybe I think he's awesome because he's like also a fellow geek and stuff. And I remember uh, reading stuff that he'd said or seeing interviews with him and stuff. And he's like, really cool, really cool guy. So give the kid a break. Really? Wow. It's just He was not one of my favorite Well, uh, I know. Guys. The, the character's... Yeah, so very you're re- much maligned. But you're, refer- you're referring I'm, to I'm, Will Wheaton. That was his that, name. That's Will his Wheaton. name. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I wasn't uh, wasn't a fan of his on the. And do you remember when they brought um, Polanski on for one season because Gates McFadden, the uh, Crusher, yeah, the doctors, she wasn't there. Yeah, yeah so they, they did the switch up. So 
let's talk about uh, let's go into kind of the Dane's dungeon here. Dane's and dungeon. so Dane's dungeon. Every episode, I do a Dane's dungeon, and and, and it's, Dane, it, Dane is awesome. And this is this is part of why we're doing this. We've talked many times over the years, and Dane is awesome. That's why we're here. So if you don't know, uh, Dane was a good friend uh, of mine and Jason's uh, who passed away of cancer a couple of years ago. Uh, super geek. Uh, Viking, uh, you know, he had a forge, amazing, amazing man, uh, and missed. And we talked about doing a podcast many times. However, he ended up passing away before we could, it could come to fruition. So this is kind of in, in homage of him. And so every episode has a Dane's dungeon. And what we do in Dane's dungeon is we talk about, I'm going to throw some stuff out and you and I are going to go back and forth saying it's going to be, it's cool shit or bullshit. Well, cool shit or bullshit. There's another origin to the cool shit or bullshit. Uh, what do you mean? That's my guiding philosophy. Yeah, I, yeah, right. it's, correct. It's what I use. I use that because it's the best way to talk about, you know, either cool, you know, cool or bull, but I like to say cool shit and bullshit. That is Jason's thing that I've, I've pulled from him. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to start throwing some stuff at you, Star Trek related. Okay. And it doesn't have to go into a lot of explanation. Just it's like mm, cool shit or bullshit. Okay. I can, I can give you full hour okay. long explanations if you want. Or we I'll don't want to keep it short. Okay. No, this is, this is just keep it short. It's kind of rapid fire All right. stuff. Lightning it, round. Okay. So it may go into explanations if we, we'll see. Okay. So the first one. NCC-1701, the original Enterprise. Cool shit or bullshit? Cool shit. Cool shit. Okay, how about the Enterprise D, which is the Galaxy class? Yeah, cool shit. Okay. Technical manual is amazing. Uh, it is. Were, do you, were there any Enterprise that you said was would be bullshit? No, I, I liked them all. Okay. And I think that's part of what's what's cool about about the enterprise is the fact that it has a continuation where it's a, it's a there's a heritage a lineage of the enterprise going back and even though I, I said negative things about the enterprise series earlier it does a really good job of, of paying the homage to the earlier yeah to the earlier ships of enterprise too okay tribbles cool shit or bullshit total cool shit if <laughs> People want to do genetic engineering and come up with things like cats are the ultimate pet, but you know, a tribble would be pretty cool. I'm not sure they would get along too well, but, yeah. um, tribbles are definitely cool shit. Okay. And I'm, I'm, they're probably, now someone's going to tell me that like there's a Japanese thing. Cause I mean, they make amazing robot things. So how hard is a tribble to do? Like, come, right. on, come on people. Okay. So how about, uh, the Andorian race? The Andorian race is hyper cool shit. Now, really? okay. remember earlier when I said some races were underused. Yes. In all the Star Trek series I've seen, the Andorians get a little thing here, a little thing there, but the Andorians are one of the major races of founding of the Federation. Like Vulcans, humans, Andorians are like right there. And you always get them. They're always pushed to the side. You've never had an Andorian continuing ongoing character. Yeah. They're even like as a minor crew member that's always on the thing, even though some of these other series have done really cool characters. Yep. Andorians have always been given the short it's it, <laughs> the short some, antenna the short antenna. i was <laughs> gonna say something like that but i thought that'd be too cheesy even for me but no the andorians really need to have more done with them because it it would be it, it, i agree yeah yeah so great. the cool andorians cool shit and cooler than, the, than they're given credit for okay wow it's a mega cool shit so okay how about uh the founders of the shapeshifters Cool shit or bullshit? The founders are cool shit, but I came up with them before Star Trek did. In one of my fantasy, <laughs> in one of my fantasy science fiction role playing games, I had I had the founders before the founders came out. Okay, and no one's gonna believe me. I've got my notes and stuff. Okay, I didn't call them the founders, but I had a shape shifting race that, that did a lot of not exactly the same, but a lot of similarities there. So that's why I think they're cool. Got it. But okay. I still have that. Okay. Yeah. So how about this is gonna be a comparison? It's not cool shit versus bullshit. So. Phaser, disruptor, which would you rather have? I would rather have a phaser because you have options with the phaser, but disruptors are really cool. Yes. Good. They, apparently, they're not very nice. They break you apart. They're apparently pa very painful. There's time right cool for the right job. There's some people <laughs> that, that definitely deserve disruptors. Okay. And phasers, phasers are great. And especially when you get like all the different types of phasers and stuff. That's, that's another thing that they didn't quite do enough, mm -hmm. enough of with, you know, like type one phasers, type two phasers. Like in, in the original Star Trek, you'll see the little ones that are like the 
the remote control little right. button press one, the yeah. type one phasers, and then the usual ones you see are the type two phasers, the little the little um. But have hand, you have you looked at the type two phaser? Got, and then they've got like the rifle ones that no. almost never get used. Right, but go back to the type two phaser. Have you have you actually looked at it? A type two phaser in the original series is a type one phaser on top of it. Yeah, they got a little. It slots thing. in. Yeah, but and, it's and then it just boosts the power. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that if you look really close at it, that's all it is, and it's just it's very very interesting that way. But it's just like the twos get used so often that right. a lot of people don't realize that they have these little mini ones, and then they have the phaser rifles that they bring out every now and then when they want to show that something's really tough. So this is why I'm gonna, I'm actually going to call bullshit on the Type One phaser. Okay, you're telling me it's got a button. You're telling me that the and these guys are not shooting off their legs or groins or stuff like that because it's a button. Like Jason, you think about it on your cell phone, you sit down on it, and it goes off. Like how many times? It's crazy. Like suspension of disbelief. I understand, yeah. but really. That's bullshit. Okay. No trigger guard. I'm, <laughs> it's not working well, for me. I, I, I'm not a firearms guy. You are, so I, <laughs> I, I, just I have say, to bout your expertise there. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm more of an edged weapon kind of guy than a... Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Batleth. Cool shit or bullshit? As much as I'm an edge weapon guy, <laughs> Batleth is bullshit. Like, it's finally on. got is a it, bullshit for me. Like, really, is that, that's, you, you're going to come up with a warrior race... And that's the fucking best you can come up with. Oh, sorry, is this a PG? <laughs> it isn't. Thing? It's like no, that that the Batleth is bullshit. B for bullshit. You you got a super cool warrior race. Yep. They should have a super cool warrior weapon. Come on. You pretty can, bad. You can do better. Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty bad actually. Yeah. No way. I was not a fan of that. Yeah. Three hmm. uh, D chess. Cool shit or bullshit? Cool shit. Always wanted to play it. Have come close to buying a 3D chess set so many times. And so, if you don't real, if you didn't realize, it's actually not just a Star Trek thing. It is an actual real thing. There's a there's a real thing, and I, oh, yeah, this might push me over the edge. I don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna pass it on to you. I want you, you. You're now can start saying some Star Trek stuff. You throw it at me, and I will say cool shit or bullshit, uh, whatever things that you can come up with that. Uh, Whatever. Okay. Cool shit or bullshit for could be Trek. It could be races. It could be, it could be anything. It could be characters. It could be, it doesn't matter. Anything Star Trek related. Okay. Tholians. Tholians. Okay. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say cool shit. We never saw them. The Tholian web, very cool. Uh, kind of mysterious race. Exactly. Yes. So I'm going to say cool shit just for the mystery. Yeah. Again. Okay. For me, Tholians. Yeah. Cool shit. And again, should have been used a little bit more, but not overused. You didn't right. want to have them overused. I'm not advocating for that. Right. But, okay. But yeah, um, going with alien races, let's let's go with um, the Gorn. Oh my goodness! I it, amazingly that, cool shit. I mean, one of the best episodes. The Gorn is awesome, and they did a they did a commercial years later with Captain Kirk and a Gorn watching TV and a football thing. It was yeah. so good. Um, at the same token, the biggest bullshit ever. Like the dude, you know, moving so slow. Yeah, but you get a look. It's also Godzilla, like it, it, like man size era kind of thing. Yeah, you get your man size Godzilla. So just imagine what what a new version of Gorn would be like. Uh, they have they have one. And they did, uh, it was a CGI version, and I want to say it was in Voyager that they had a Gorn. Oh. Yes. I'll have to, have to see. Uh, and they totally fucked it up. It didn't even look like it. It was like a, almost like an alien thing. It was, it no, was. Yeah, it's good. You're reptilian. Like, I mean, come on. I know. Like, one of the big things to wonder about when you're going with things is you got to wonder about, like, what would a sentient dinosaur race be? Like, I mean. Right. I remember doing, there was. A lot of people played Sim City. I liked Sim Earth. Yeah. And I was, my whole goal was try to get a sentient dinosaur race <laughs> yeah. race going. I wasn't very successful, but anyway. But Okay. So why would you not have a major race in the thing to do it? Um, so I'm going to say... Okay, sorry. I've got to keep on topic okay. here because I, I just about went down a whole divergent So track. I'm going to say Gorn, cool shit in the bullshit kind of way, but yeah, cool shit. Very cool. Okay. Anyway, so if you want to, okay, take it in. If you since you're more of a next generation guy, then we say the Q. The Q is um, the Q. Cool shit or bullshit? Well, I'm going to say the Q is bullshit. Um, yeah, I'm going to say Q is bullshit. Although Q, um, the actor, very cool. Q rather than the Q. But no, 
You're talking about the continuum. Yeah. The, as the a race. Continu- uh, I'm going to say bullshit on that. I, I just really wasn't a fan. However, there was an episode in The Next Generation where they had another uh, almost there was another, omnipotent. Uh, there's another cue. That... It, it, almost an omnipotent being. And he um, ends up killing a whole race. The Husnack. He says, I killed the so-and-so. And then yeah. Picard's like, oh, you mean you killed the ship? And he's like, no, I killed, killed them the entire race. everywhere. Yes. You know, is really one life worth 50 billion? That's what he said. It was such a powerful episode. Yeah. And so that guy was, he was like a Q. It was a kind of a different race. They alluded to, he's a superpower, super omniscient dude. But yeah, that was very cool. So I liked him better than I liked the Q. So mm-hmm. bullshit. One more. What do you got? Uh, the Romulans, bullshit. No. Never liked the bull. I never liked the Romulans. Romulans, cool shit. Okay. Well, we'll leave just, it at that. Just, just, okay. Well, we'll leave it at that for a moment. get into it, we, yeah. could, we could do a whole thing no. on... Didn't like on, the Romulans. Nope. Why not? Next question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Moving on. It's your show. <laughs> I didn't like the Romulans because, I mean, other than being, you know, the distant cousin of the, of the Vulcans, you know, and being militaristic and that type of thing, you may, it's like emotional... Emotional Vulcans in a way. So the series already had the Klingons. Mm -hmm. And now they introduce kind of this. The Romulans are really based on the Roman Empire. That's all that is. The Romulan Star Empire and Romulus and Remus. It was was very thinly in the the Praetors and Senators and stuff. Well, again, I'm biased being a classicist that any Roman Greco, Persian, Egyptian, all that kind of stuff is all... But really the funny thing is they were mixing, like, as the initial series came out and you had the Klingons and Romulans, a lot of the technologies, yeah, well, one they were the, using the same the, ships. One of the problem was, was when they gave the Klingons cloaking, the cloaking. that's what, if something could be said to, if, if I was going to grant you your thing, I'm not granting it, but if I was going to, it would, yeah. be, it would, the point at which that would happen was when the Klingons gained the cloaking thing, which would steal the coolness from the Romulans. And they should have kept that separate because you want it when you're making themed races, you want to keep things distinct and, and different. Right. And I think if the Romulans would have kept the cloaking and the Klingons didn't, like you didn't even like the Romulan ships in the next generation. No, they were way better. The birds of prey. Uh, yeah. They called them birds of prey too, didn't they? And like the Tal Shiar. And yeah, the... it was, it was interesting, but it still didn't. I, I liked the Klingons better because there was a rawness about them and it was a little bit more unique Mm-hmm. Then I found that the Romulans were. Yes, the ships in the next generation were much cooler and stuff like that. But even if they have Batlas, I, I don't. I think the Batlas is a bullshit thing. But you know, we all got some bullshit not, about yeah, us. We've all got some bullshit about us. Yeah. So, um, but Romulans not so much. To be fair, I'm pro Roman and you're pro Viking. So that, that kind of makes that sense. That may be right? part of our di- difference. Difference there. Yeah, I would. What I would agree with that. To be clear, I do think the Klingons are cool shit too. Okay. Got it. Well, you got one more? Say warp. Warp. You know, it's funny you say that. Because I was thinking about that today as a topic. Uh, do I think warp? I think warp is cool shit. I think Star Wars light speed is bullshit. Okay. And you're not a you're not a Babylon Five guy. You haven't haven't seen no, that yet. No, I've so. watched episodes and stuff, okay. but I, I don't you, know you enough to, to talk thing. about okay, it. So we will leave that for a separate thing after I get you get you watching that well I although found- this isn't about babylon 5 i will say that one of the things that made deep space 9 such a good version of star trek was because it had to compete against babylon 5 yeah and there's in fact a few things that are like really close one another really good picard episode mm-hmm. about the lights how many times have i referenced that one yeah well, with the gem with uh not the gem the uh cardassians, the Car- cardassians and he's a, a prisoner of war and a prisoner of war yeah and stuff yeah that, are there three that, lights or five lights that was a really good episode with the lights and yeah so it's picard has so many good episodes like there's other good characters on next generation too but picard is is mm-hmm. really head and shoulders above the, the the treatment he gets in some of those things that the character yeah gets he really was gets. he really was remarkable so I'm not. I'm not going to push him past Kirk, but I, I. I really can't take anything away from him. No, but I mean, we. The reason I put Picard ahead of Kirk is because he's just a deeper character. He's had more time to develop. Oh, definitely. of course, right. And so, he's more. You know, he's more intelligent. He's more cerebral and things like that. And I would say that Kirk is much more one-dimensional as a captain, yes. and 
Picard was allowed to develop much more. Yeah, they did get to do a lot more. Fantastic character, though, really. Like, you know, every time I think about it, it's like some cool stuff. Like, yeah. every time I, <laughs> Lindsay, my wife, she asked me, she's like, hey, what would you like? And I'm like, tea, Earl Grey, Grey hot, hot, right? <laughs> yeah. You, you have all these Star Trek-isms mm-hmm. um, that, that we pull out. That's, that might be a good thing to talk about the Star Trek-isms, little things that you use in your everyday life that are Star Trek. Okay, well, why don't we do that right now? Let's do that right now. Okay. On the Torvis podcast. So Star Trek isms. So by Star Trek isms, I mean things that you think about, maybe not daily, but at least occasionally in real life, things that you you think about Star Trek things or do things that are Star Trek related that make you things that make you think about Star that sort of that sort of thing. Well, you and I have a thing that we do. We do yeah. <laughs> hand across the chest uh, greeting. You're right. Let me do that one. We also do the Conan one with the two snakes. The two snakes. So. <clears throat> that's yeah. also a different yeah. episode. Different episode. We'll get into the Hyborian Age. That's an entire... Uh, if you don't... Uh, Jason uh, has one of the largest collections of uh, Conan stuff. He's a huge Conan fan, so maybe one day I will uh, we'll talk about that, because I am not. I don't know a lot about Conan, but I'm sure you could do yeah. a whole episode. Conan, I could do a whole episode. Role-playing. Okay. There's. I'm a multi-geek thing. I'm not... I'm a, a big Star Trek fan, but I'm not the biggest Star Trek fan. It's just one as- aspect of multi-geekism. Okay, so... We do the Romulan salute. What other? What's one that you do in your daily life? I do several several different things because I'm really weird. Um, <laughs> I think of one of the things Scotty said. Now I don't remember the exact quote, mm-hmm. but there was a thing about how I think Kirk was asking or someone anyway. He he where he overestimates how long it's going to take to do something, and then if he thinks it's going to take an hour or something to do it, he he increases the amount of time that he thinks it's going to take so that you can, can be actually, seen as a miracle worker. Done. So that's, that's a good tip for anyone in their life, especially if you're working on projects where people want to know when something's going to be done. Right. If you think it's going to take an hour, don't tell anyone it's going to be done in an hour. Tell them what's going to be done in two hours or something. Cause when you get it done in an hour, then you're a miracle worker. Then you're a miracle worker. That was the thing with it. You be trying to think, Oh yeah, I know one that you do use all the time. Uh, when Jason comes in and he sits down on a chair, if the chair's low enough, he'll pull the Riker maneuver and he'll he'll hop over the back of it to sit down and then adjust his his <laughs> tunic. <laughs> oh yes, the old Riker maneuver. Uh, it's so funny. Oh my god! And sometimes there's things that not just that you do, but you think about. Another very Star Trek thing that we come across in life. We've mentioned communicators and stuff like that. Doors, automatic doors. Uh, the sliding doors that open open up. Think about Star Trek. Pretty much every day, you run into one of those. But you combine a Star Wars thing. I do with that. combine. Sometimes I do you often do, combine the, the Star Wars Jedi, the, the Jedi opening wave too. Yeah. That's so. You know, it's like one of those mishmash things where they combine all the different. You know, like they've got the Harry Potter, Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, all those things all thrown into one to try to piss off fans. But <laughs> right. I think those are awesome. Yeah, I guess we, you know, I don't know. I mean, I use the tea Earl Grey hot thing all the time, too. I do. I have to admit, tea Earl Grey hot. Although yeah. London fogs are better than Earl Grey tea. They are. Closely related, and if you like Earl Grey tea, do try a London fog. Amazing. Didn't you love on the original episode, whenever they got food from the replicator, or the food dispenser, or whatever, it was, it usually was looked like fruit, and it was like different colored fruit. Oh yeah, that's, that's all it was. Like had, it was never you never saw a steak or any meat or anything like that. It's like oh, here's my my cubes, my colored cubes. Captain Kirk, one of his favorites was a coffee and a chicken chicken salad sandwich or some chick, some kind of chicken sandwich. Uh huh. Interesting. I love it. I it love might it. have been what he was ordering with the triples. I can't remember exactly. Do you remember when he got glasses and because he couldn't get the surgery done? Yes. And, and he couldn't take the retinex? And if, you're not very, if you're not very young, that will speak to you more when you get older. Yeah, the glasses? Yeah. Yes. And the best part is, is when he's in the middle of the battle in the Wrath of Khan, and he's got to, yeah. put, he's got to put the glasses on, yeah. and he goes like this. He puts them on, and then yeah. he goes, damn. <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Uh, my goodness. Well, this is the, uh, I know we could go on forever and ever, but this is kind of the first portion of the Star Trek stuff uh, we were touching upon in the Torvis podcast, uh, kind of a smattering. I'm sure when we go into part two, we will get into more detail and uh, some super geek stuff will come from that. Well, I want you to do your greeting. Let me see it. Put your hand up. Let's see if you can do it without fixing his hands. No, not the Romulan. Do the Vulcan. Can you do it? 
Oh, uh, he <laughs> he's having troubles. Almost, almost. It's gotta be there. You go. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> that's a Jewish hand signal, by the way. That that's where. Oh, is that where? That's where Len and Nemo got it from. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. a little too many finger locks. Some of the fingers don't work as good as they used to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks again. Uh, this has been the Torvis Podcast, and this has been uh, the Star Trek episode uh, part one. And we'll see you next time. Yeah.